Muito bom dia. Eu estou aqui a falar dos uh, muitos anos passados. Os meus pais ficaram aqui em Angola de 1927 até 67. Eu vou falar do trabalho de, que eles fez na uh, medicina e na pesquisa da medicina. Mas já esqueci muitas palavras em português e eu vou, vou falar em inglês. Esta é uma parte da história da Angola. One chapter must be on the medical and medical research by the Protestant missionaries in those years. I will talk about the history of a man and a wife, Senhor Dr. Strongway e a esposa. My parents worked here from 1927 until 1967. The work was done always at the Hospital de Chisamba in BA province, Perth de Quito. Yeah. Theirs was a life dedicated to the people of Angola. All of their life work was for the people of Angola. This is their story of medical science. First, I talk very briefly about the earliest days of medicine in the Planalto. The earliest days of medicine in the Planalto took place in 1886, and Dr. Curry of Shisamba was not a medical doctor, but he did a great deal of medical work in the Planalto. And I don't need to go through all of the details here, but already by 19, by 1891, he was already seeing patients. By 1893, he had many, many patients coming to be treated for many of the illnesses of, of, of Angola. And a woman named Helen Melville, a nurse, arrived at that time, and she also stayed in Shisamba in Angola for many, many years. I list here the first report of the Duenses of the Highlands, published in 1894. This is a very interesting piece of information because it's contained in a letter that he wrote to his mother. So all of this information comes from a letter to the mother of Dr. Curry. The second report on the diseases of the, of the Highlands of the Planalto was by a Dr. Wellman. Dr. Wellman arrived at Nisan de Comandongo in uh, 1896, before the turn of the century, and he stayed until 1906. And he published extensively on the illnesses and the doenses of the, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of, the, of the Planalto already by 1904 and 1906. I go through these not in detail, but these are the lists of the diseases that he reported and recorded in that period, in that time, Nesta Bays. Malaria, of course, filariasis, crocro, as they called it, which is uh, associated with filariasis. I will not go through all of these, but, uh, but these are the diseases that we still know today. Ainda fica nestes dias. He reported and published on this work and talked about how to deal with them. Tuberculosis, of course, is still a problem. Phenomia, muitopotomia, leprosa, goiter, goiter, bosso, bosso, no sé cómo se llama. Onyalai, illnesses of, uh, of vitamin C deficiency, tropical ulcers, snake bites, ticks, lice, manioc poisoning, and so on, many, many other uh, diseases. Interestingly, even in 1904, he published that he had to deal with many gunshot wounds. This was the hospital built in 1903, 1903 hospital at the Missão de Chisamba, which I think was maybe the first hospital in the Planalto de Angola. This is the same hospital later in 1913 with a new doctor, and you can see the patients waiting, waiting to be treated. This is my father's clinic where he saw hundreds and thousands of patients coming for treatment of various kinds and for many, many different uh, illnesses and, and, uh, and doenses. 
Now let me give you some statistics about the Misan de Chisamba Hospital, or Hospital de Chisamba. First hospital, 1903, first hospital beds. New hospital built in the 1920s. My parents arrived from Lisboa, learned Portuguese, did the diploma in tropical medicine and, uh, in, in Lisbon, and they arrived in Angola in 1928. And the next thing they had to do was to learn to speak Umbundu. So they became very fluent in both Portuguese and Umbundu over their lifetime. The hospital grew to 50 beds by 1931. 1953, there were 90 beds. 1955, 100 beds. 1965, 140 beds. And bed patients by 1966 had already reached 33,000 Many, many nurses and assistants were trained, so there were many educated and trained workers in the hospital. This slide shows the uh, number of bed patients over this period of time, and you can see how they steadily rose until the time that they departed in 1967, as I said, up until uh, 3,000, uh, uh, over 3,000 bed patients, not days, just total patients. He was a very famous surgeon and performed many, many surgeries. I know many people that I have met here in Angola who, uh, who still remember. In fact, my the minister for it, in 1931, he did 198 operations. In 1966, he did 2,155 operations. The growth was possible because he trained many competent assistants, many, many competent assistants. He reports that in his later years he became so efficient he could do an appendix operation in cinco minutos, in five minutes. Uh, patients came from all parts of Angola, also from the Belgian Congo, from Namibia, from Zambia, <coughs> from Zimbabwe. He performed many cataract surgeries on the eyes, uh, many hernias, uh, and uh, many ulcers. Uh, total operations in his lifetime in Angola were 40,000, 40 mil. Here's the slide again of the operations, and you see over that period of time how they rose. The times when they decreased a little bit was when they were on leave and were away from Angola for a year and then they would go down. But the number of operations was really, truly, truly amazing. Consultations, consultas, uh, starting in 1903, 5,600, and by 1946 it was over 82,000. Uh, I don't have figures on the consultas yet for, uh, for later years, but probably rose to 200,000 uh, per each year. I'll just go quickly through some of the diseases that they talked about and they dealt with. Of course, malaria was, and still is, such a big problem. Interesting to remember, though, that the, uh, it was only in 1880 that the parasite of malaria was even identified, and it was in 1881 before it was connected to the uh, presence of, uh, of mosquitoes, mosquitoes. The blackwater fever uh, was very common by that time, and by 1898, finally they had figured out malaria and what was the cause. So treatment was many different treatments, quinine, adabrin, and of course many more modern uh, treatments. Relapsing fever or tick fever, very common at that time and very serious. But later, as the antibiotics became available in the 1930s, they were able to treat and deal with, the, uh, with tick fever, relapsing fever. Smallpox, variola, uh, many outbreaks of smallpox back as far as 1901 up to 1913. They report uh, the start of vaccinations, and by 1929 they were doing 100 vaccinations a day against, uh, against uh, uh, smallpox, or contravalia. Uh, 1930s, smallpox was very widespread. Again, in 1936, it was very widespread. All of this is recorded in my parents' letters that they wrote back to Canada. And in, by 1966, they were doing thousands of vaccinations uh, every year. Polio was common. Uh, 
they again uh, did treatment with the new sock vaccine and uh, there were some years when they did as many as 50,000 vaccinations for poliomyelitis. Bubonic plague was very rare in the highlands. The only person in my father's hospital that ever had bubonic plague was my mother. Aminia mai te bubon. Amazing. Whooping cough, uh, tasa convulsa, again, was very common in the early days, but then came the vaccinations for whooping cough and it decreased substantially. Leprosa, leprosy, uh, leprosy very widespread. In the early days, the treatment was with Shalmugar oil before 1950, and then came a new treatment. And when the new treatment came, they were actually able to cure leprosy, not reverse it, but to cure it. And so that became a peak number of, of uh, leprosy patients in, uh, in Shisamba by, uh, in 1960. And that early detection meant that uh, they, uh, they were able to respond much, much faster. The way he did the treatment is he had 83 centers spread around the area of of uh, Quito, and the 83 villages were where the treatment for leprosy was performed. You see here the chart of leprosy patients under treatment. You will see in 1960 how it decreased. It didn't decrease because they stopped treating it. It decreased because they were treating it and people were being cured. So this represents the cure of people with leprosy uh, in that decreased number, and again, in 83 communities spread throughout the, uh, the, the, the aldeas, the villages of Angola. They did a great deal of work on a disease called filaria, or river blindness. River blindness was first, they first detected it in Angola, and they did a great deal of research on this, this disease, carried by gnats near, uh, by flies, uh, near running water, it was treated first with Hetrazan, and in 1950, they identified 220 cases. By 1953, it was 700 cases. By 1962, they were treating 1,500 patients with river, river blindness. I should mention that in uh, the year 1952, I was one of those that they treated, because I also had the river blindness from, uh, from that time. Thousands of cataracts uh, were performed uh, to restore sight. I give here a picture. This is a picture of my father with two witch doctors. This is a very interesting picture because you'll notice that the two witch doctors are wearing glasses. They had their cataracts removed and my father restored their sight. And for many years afterwards, he and these two witch doctors worked very closely together and were very good friends. They were very good friends for many years. Pneumonia, of course, was very widespread, still is to some extent, but again, common in the dry season. In 1940, they started a uh, new treatment for it, and by 1944, the sulfur drugs had uh, almost cured pneumonia. When they had cases of pneumonia, they came in, they treated them, and they were cured very quickly. Tuberculosis, very widespread, treatment in many villages. By 1955, he had uh, uh, 600 patients uh, preparing uh, that time to acquire an x-ray machine to, uh, <coughs> to, 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 to study this. By 1962, tuberculosis was very common. And then in 1965, they started the vaccine. And again, by 1966, he had only 114 cases of tuberculosis because they had been able to vaccinate many people. Maternidad was very big. Uh, many people were born in the hospital. And I met somebody yesterday who was born in the Hospital de Shisamba in uh, 1967. So there are many people that were born there. But only the difficult cases, because they had, they had many uh, 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 midwives, many parteras, uh, in aldeas in their villages around, uh, around Shisamba. And so uh, the uh, maternity work was very common, and of course they did many cesarean operations and so on, because they had the complicated ones in the hospital. Uh, Dear Professor, 
you must uh, finish. Yeah. Time is uh, near. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm nearly finished now. Uh, I will talk very quickly about cardiovascular disease. No cardiovascular disease in 40 years, just one case. Diabetes, only four cases in all those years. Dental extractions, up to 6,000 a year by the time they retired. Laboratory tests, many, many laboratory tests over the years. Nutritional work, uh, many early superstitions about nutritional work was very, very important. And they did a great deal of work on Utwe uh, Onene, Onyalai, Goiter with Kwasher uh, Kor, Pelagra, and so on. Uh, this is then a picture of uh, the, the hospital as it was in 1967 and 40 years of medical science in the development of Angola. Life expectancy during that time rose from 8 years to 45 years. Re-entry to visa in 1949 was difficult because the Portuguese doctors were, uh, were opposed to having such, a, such excellence medicine in, in, uh, in their presence. Re-entry in 1962 was also difficult because, as you know, this was a difficult time in Angola. And uh, I show here a satellite picture of 2014 from Google Earth of the current view of the Hospital de Chisson. Muito obrigado.